Hi there. You know, I get a lot of requests to review older music, but I never seem to get the chance. But one thing I do like to do when I'm not bitching about Train or trolling Chris Brown is to study one-hit wonders. Yeah, yeah, I know everyone does. VH1 releases another list every week that's something like the top 100 awesomely bad one-hit wonders of the 90s. But what bothers me is that they don't go in deep enough. This band formed, they had a hit, they didn't have another, and they broke up, and that's all you ever hear. I want to know more. I want to know why they didn't have a second hit. I want to know if they're really one-hit wonders, because a lot of the time they're not. I want to know all about these mysterious strangers who briefly touched down and then disappeared into the ether. But I'm going to need a really good one to kick off this project with. Hmm. Aha! Our first act comes all the way from Oslo, Norway. Now, when I think Norwegian bands, generally I'm thinking of the kind of music that never charts even one song. Sacrifice. And for obvious reasons. But during the height of the MTV era, three young men hit it big and became music video stars for one brief shining moment. Those men were lead singer Morten Harkett, keyboardist Paul Wachtar, and guitarist Magnifer Holman. They were the band known as AHA. Let's check them out. Now obviously you know their big hit, Take On Me. If you don't, I'm gonna reach through the screen and smack you. What with the hip retroness of everything 80s, you know this song and it's utterly classic video, and I refuse to believe otherwise. At the very least, you've seen the literal video, you kids with your YouTubes and your skinny jeans and bleh. So okay, before we look at their career as a whole, let's take a quick look at Take On Me, one of the greatest music videos of all time. Wait a minute, what the hell is this? Where's the sketch pad drawings and where's the pretty girl? Ah, okay. See, this is the original version of Take On Me from 1984. I'd always heard that Take On Me didn't get big until they made their one really good video, which I never understood. Kaja Gugu made it big around the same time and they didn't have a good video, or a good song for that matter. All they had was stupid hair. Watching this now, I think I do see the problem. The original video is boring and rightly forgotten, but also this early version it, it needs work. I definitely can't say that I like this arrangement as much. I mean, I'm not a synth nerd by any means, but the Japanese plucks strings tone that he picked there is definitely wrong. Okay, well this version did well in Norway, but took them absolutely nowhere in the rest of the world. They were going to need some help to push them over the edge. Meet the person that would help them do that. Very first video I can remember seeing that. Was this man is music video visionary Steve Barron, a daring visual stylist who made some of the best videos of the 80s, and also a couple of the worst. You have to understand, the music video was a pretty unsophisticated art form at this point, and some of his videos have not aged all that well, but he was very creative and he was willing to experiment in lots of different ways, and in the process he created some truly indelible images that defined the decade. He also directed the first Ninja Turtles movie and managed to not turn them into aliens! But I digress. I don't think it's hyperbole to call Take On Me the best video of all time. It tells the romantic tale of a comic book character who sucks a woman into a sketch world and then they get attacked by bad guys and have to escape and then he beats himself into a wall to turn three dimensional. It is the most touching love story of our generation. And it's, it's astonishing how much you care about the romance between a woman who has no dialogue and a guy who is literally a two dimensional sketch. Although we do find out a little, this chick is cute and shy, but she's also apparently pretty hip as she reads these weird black and white no dialogue comic books. I always wondered what was going on in that thing. I think it's like a Scandinavian speed racer type of deal. But it all works. Perfectly. The animation is great, it tugs at your heartstrings, and somehow it hasn't aged a second, especially compared with whatever else was coming out in 85. I felt more for this couple than I did for the ones in the English Patient, that's for damn sure. But the video isn't the only reason why Take On Me has endured throughout the decades. In some of the lyrics, you can clearly see that English is not this man's first language. But you know what? There's poetry in that. I'm not sure he even understood what Take On Me means, or that it's wrong grammatically, but it sounds great, doesn't it? 
A lot of the early MTV acts were derided as talentless pretty boys trading off their looks rather than their music, but Harkett proves he has the pipes here, as anyone who has humiliated themselves trying to sing this at karaoke has likely proven. For something so 80s, Take On Me, both the song and the video, is timeless and unbearably romantic. So, where did it all go wrong? AHA's second biggest hit is actually their first biggest hit in some countries. It's called The Sun Always Shines on TV, and it actually outdid Take On Me in the UK and in Ireland, and did just about as well in most of Europe. This made it to number 20 in this country, which makes them not a one-hit wonder, depending on how you define hit. But people usually define a one-hit wonder by hindsight, and AHA made just one lasting impression in people's minds, and this wasn't it. Why is that? You'd think it would work. Sun Always Shines on TV once again finds them working with Steve Barron, which they would do continuously for the rest of their careers, which makes perfect sense to me, he basically made them. I think listening to this song has really helped me to articulate what AHA did so well. Like Take On Me, they're just aching with emotions. Now it doesn't have the soaring high notes of Take On Me or the awesome Flight of the Bumblebee breakdown, but it's big and gothic and almost as good. The clearest point of comparison for AHA is obviously Duran Duran, but Duran Duran are all about looking cool and being sexy. And there was Wham, of course, but they were just silly. But AHA were romantics. Possibly new romantics, I'll have to check on that. See, AHA wanted you. They needed you. They wanted to touch your soul. They had so many deep feelings that they needed to share with you. And you know what? Personally, I never saw the big deal about Duran Duran looks wise, but this Morton Harkett, he is a dreamboat. Oh, his eyes, they look, look straight into your heart. So why did this song fail so badly at the charts? Why is this not as fondly remembered as Take On Me? Well, it could be that Harkett's grasp of English has started to seriously fail him. Take on me, even with the ESL stuff, is quite touching. Sun Always Shines on TV, though, is uh, hard to interpret. You sure? Cause I was definitely going to ask you to defend the shameful lowlands of the way you're drifting gloomily through time. That was the number one question on my mind. Or at the very least, to defend the shameful weirdness of the way you're drifting confusedly through your thesaurus. But for me, it's not that. I personally am putting the blame squarely on the video. Not because of the weird creepy heads facing everywhere, I mean that's definitely a bunch of pointless weirdness, but that was everywhere in the 80s. No, I blame the opening scenes. Cause you know the couple in Take On Me? They didn't make it. Nope, he reverts back into pencil sketches and runs off. It even comes with a the end. That's it. A nice screw you to everyone who cared about those two people. He pounded on the walls to make the black and whiteness go away. Why couldn't he do it again? I wanted them to make it. I guess it makes sense that where Take On Me was hopeful and inviting, the sun always shines on TV would be aching and unhappy, but no, no, it's not fair. It's just not fair. The sun always shines on TV. Unless that TV is showing this music video, I guess. Thanks a lot, Steve Barron. Uh, yeah, a ton of them. Let me make this clear. These alleged one-hit wonders were enormously successful. They were big in Europe throughout the 80s and humongous in Norway for a good 25 years. The most successful Norwegian act of all time. And they sold 36 million albums. Sales-wise, that makes them one of the biggest Scandinavian acts of all time, roughly around as big as Ace of Bass. Other career highlights for AHA include when they played to a sellout crowd in Rock in Rio in 1991, but if you know anything about this band besides Take On Me, it's probably their theme to a James Bond movie. They may not have had any more American hits, but they still had enough clout in Europe that they were chosen to perform the theme to the 1987 film The Living Daylights. Haven't seen that one? Yeah, there's a reason. The Bond is Timothy Dalton. The bad guy is Joe Don Baker. I've seen it, and trust me, you can go ahead and skip that one. 
Now the song is okay, I guess. Aha's sweeping bigness makes him a good choice for a James Bond theme, but all I hear in this is a grim reminder that the 80s were really, really not good for 007. Personally, if I had to pick out one other song that I really do think people should listen to, I'd tell you that they actually do a really awesome cover of the Everly Brothers' Crying in the Rain. I'm gonna wear a smile and walk in the sun And maybe a fool Look to lend God and you'll never see me complain I'll do my crying in the rain So, verdict? Hell yeah, they did. Hell, we let the Thompson twins have a bunch of hits. Why should AHA have been any different? I wouldn't say they should have been one of the biggest names ever or anything, but they were probably too good and too successful in their home country to be dismissed as just one hitters. They were not, in fact, gone in a day or two. They toured right up to around 2010 before retiring, and they released one more goodbye video, again with Steve Barron, where they turned into animated butterflies and flew away. Aw. Farewell, AHA. May you forever hit those high notes. 